What's up, everybody? Welcome to Trustani Thanksgiving Tokens, and happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a good one today. Uh, but let's go and jump into our opening hand. So we have Catacombs, Governy Township, Essence Warden. We have Triple Green. If we hit Corsair, hit another land, I like that. Do we want a mulligan? Yeah, let's go one more. I'm not super wild about this opening hand. Yeah, we can make this work. We have a wild speaker. We have, hopefully we'll get another green source for that. Yes, we will keep on this one. Let's get Trustani pop back up. In fact, that sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and put that on top. Okay, uh, let's go and lead off with the Wooded Foothills and anything else. We're going to go ahead and pass the turn over to our opponent. But yes, Happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you have a good one today. If you're going to see some fin uh, friends and family, uh, I am planning on that for sure. Um, we are playing Trostani. So whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. And then for three mana, populate. Hey, and I'm really excited. I'm going to be able to... Uh, not be able to, but I'm going to tell you about what uh, my Thanksgiving plans would normally consist of, so always enjoy doing that. Let's go and draw into that uh, Canopy Vista. Let's get the Vista down, and then anything else, we're going to go and kick it over. We are playing against the Gitrog Monster, Death Touch. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the Gitrog Monster, unless you sacrifice a land. Uh, then you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Then whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. But yes, if you're new to the channel, uh, I like to bust out holiday decks to kind of have some fun with, and Trostani is our Thanksgiving token deck. Um, I did one last year, Trostani. It's been a little bit while since I've done it, but um, I was trying to think of a good like Thanksgiving commander. And you could kind of do Zedru if you wanted to, you know, because he's giving a lot of stuff, but it doesn't really feel Thanksgiving, doesn't really feel that warming. And so I felt like tokens and a lot of life gain, and plus, hey, it looks like kind of Thanksgiving, if you want to call it that. I don't know. Anyway, that's what we go for. Let's go ahead and crack the Wooded Foothills. That sounds good. Yeah, let's go and crack the Wooded Foothills. We're going to grab a, uh, grab the plate. What is that? I cannot remember the name. Savannah. There we go. Grab the Savannah. Let's go and go for Soul Warden. Let's get that down. Let's go and go for the planes. That way, if we do hit a, uh, at least another force, we can go for Tristani. Then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. Kick it over to our opponent. Uh, we can still go and get down the Gurk Wildspeaker next turn to kind of get in the spots where we untap some of our lands. And then we also have Scion on the hand, which is a really good card. Love it. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, create a 1 1 bird creature token, and then populate. So we can kind of use it in a spot to get an extra bird token, which is nice. It's not bad. But uh, when you have a lot of. Um, like, we have a lot of token generation in the deck, so if we can get that down, something like Advent of the Worm or a copy of 5-5 five, five Worm Token with Trample, yeah, and then you're getting some business. Um, I did kind of test out Trostani earlier, and I uh, kind of liked that we did get the Turkey Deep Fryer going, uh, because I ended up getting an Aetherflux win by getting down a couple worms and then going for a second harvest, which is pretty Thanksgiving-y, if you want to think about it. But yeah, I got a second harvest, in, uh, second harvest down, and then activated the Aetherflux Reservoir to uh, kind of go for the win. So that was pretty fun. An opponent did search up a land. They searched up a bayou. So let's go and leave that up so we can cross it off. All right, drawn to Voice of Resurgence. Yeah, let's go and go. Let's get down the Grove of the Guardian. Let's go for Gurik. We're going to be able to get down on uh, Voice of Resurgence. I think I like that. Okay, get down Gurik Wildspeaker. Let's go for the plus ability. Untap up to two lands. Let's go to Canopy Vista and Savannah. Let's go for Voice of Resurgence. It's going to be green and then white. And then we're going to gain that life. Anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So, next turn, if we do not hit a force, we're going to be able to get down Tristani simply by uh, adding that mana to our mana pool, then uh, tapping it with the Wild Speaker, and then we'll be good to go. And then we can start going for Scion. If we want to go for the Devout Invocation to get some good angels on the battlefield, we could definitely go for that. But, let's talk Thanksgiving. So, if you're not from the United States, uh, Thanksgiving is a day to where you... Um, you get together with friends and family, you eat a lot, and you have a lot of fun. Now, typically what I do is, or at least my dad does, is he always fries the turkey. And, oh, I'm telling you, fried turkey, it is so good. I love it. It's going to get that crossed off, get the Gitrog Monster down. If you've never had fried turkey, um, I don't know how to suggest getting some, but it's definitely really good. Like my grandmother, she'll, um, because we have a big enough family where we bring about two or three turkeys. We do two fried turkeys and then one baked turkey. And my grandma, she, um, and she'll bake a turkey all day and like put the uh, put the broth on it and make sure it's nice and moist and stuff like that. But uh, you just drop the turkey in the deep fryer for like 30 minutes and it comes out tasting better than like a baked turkey. So I always feel kind of bad about that, but um, I eat both of them. Okay, drawn to Care Metra, God of Harvest. And also I'll give you a breakdown of some of my favorite sides. Let's go and go for Tristani. I, I think I like that. Let's go a double white, untap up to two lands, untap the savannas, and then the canopy vista. We'll go double green on that. We could go for Karametra if we wanted to go for Tristani, but I really want to get that life gain going. Looking at double green. Ooh, almost clicked on Karametra. Uh, let's go for Tristani. There we go. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Get that down. 
and then anything else, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. Gain a life off that. We also get into spots where we can simply go for the minus four ability, the plus three and trample, if we go for Scion and get those bird tokens down. So that might be enough for help, kind of help us, um, kind of help, kind of push in enough final combat damage. And then we also have Care Metro, so we've got some really good devotion on the battlefield. We're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, nine. Pretty good devotion on that. But yeah, some of my favorite sides. I always do fried turkey. That's always really good. And then um, I love, we do sweet potatoes. And then my mom does it to where it's brown sugar on one side and then marshmallows on the other side. And I always scoop it out of the middle because I mean, you can't pick both. I mean, you can't just pick one. you got to pick both. So I always go for that. And then my uh, grandmother, she makes some German noodles. And they're not like spatzel. They're just really thin. I'm trying to think how to describe it. It's like really thin, like flat ramen noodles. But it just has this really simple kind of like salt and pepper using some sort of broth as kind of like a coating for it. But it's just one of those things where it's so simple, but it tastes so good. I mean, it just goes the distance with that. I love it. It's definitely one of my favorite things to get. Now, as far as dessert goes, I'm not really a huge pumpkin pie person. If there's cherry pie, definitely going to go for that. You know, if we get into some cherry pie during the Thanksgiving dinner, that's something we can kind of line it up to where we don't eat enough for dinner. And then we get some of that cherry pie. Just trying to do some commentary on my Thanksgiving day. I hope you appreciate it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm usually like some sort of berry style pie, whether it's blueberry or... Um, Blueberry or like uh, strawberry, not really strawberry, you don't see strawberry pie, but or cherry, that's what I'm thinking of, cherry, which is always good to get that. <laughs> Definitely enjoy that. And then she also makes some, um, my grandmother is a great cook, She she's really good. She makes a bread pudding dessert that has like this butter rum sauce on it, and it is, oh, I mean... My goodness, it's uh, it's got me just taking a step back thinking about it right now. It just tastes so good. All right, Pony is swinging with Get Rock Monster at Gurga Wild Speaker. Uh, do we need to go for the Voice of Resurgence block on that to keep it up? We could go for Soul Warden if we want to. Now, if we go for Voice of Resurgence, we're going to be able to get a Populate token next turn. I think I like that. Let's go for that. Let's go Voice of Resurgence block on the Get Rock Monster. <laughs> Trying to eat Gurg, but Gurg's not going to have it. We're going to get a nice token for our Troubles. And that way we do go for the Scion, we're going to get the Bird Token, and we'll get that Populate too, which will be really good. Alright, let's go and gain life off that. Go for the Trostani trigger. And then I'm trying to think of what else that I normally get. I always love mashed potatoes, that's definitely just a really good thing to, to go for. Always tastes great. Alright, and we are 3 away from 40, so we're almost back to the original starting life total. And then let's see what we draw into... Drawn to harmonize. Okay. Let's go and go for Scion. I think I like that. We're looking at white. And we're going to add white off of that too. Let's go for Gurk Wild Speaker. Untap up to two target lands. Now if we're going to chump block, we could put a beast token onto the battlefield. No, we can block with the bird token. I like that. Untap the Canopy Vista and the Savannah. And we'll go and tap the Canopy Vista down, go for the Scion. That would get that Populate token off the Elemental. And then with them having just Dryad Arbor and Sylvan Safekeeper, we can actually go and push in with the, uh, the Elemental token. Alright, we're going to gain that life off Soul Ward and go for Trostani's trigger. Scion, always yield to that. Yes, indeed. And if you see the new little yield trigger, let's go and populate on the Elemental token. But yeah, if you see that little yield trigger, that means I'm yielding to that. So if you're wondering what that was, that's exactly what it is. Okay, get the Soul Warden, and then Trostani up there, gain that life. And then if we just simply draw into Aether Flux Reservoir, we can get that down and activate it and blast our opponent with it. Alright, we go to 45. Oh, yes, loving it. Get that life gain trigger. And then, off of Trostani, we do have the three, uh, act, three mana activation of Populate, so we can actually make a copy of one of the elemental tokens. Alright, let's go and push in on this one. Do we actually want to swing in with the crew? I think we do. We swing at Trostani. That's going to be a 1 1 Dryad Arbor, Sylvan Safekeeper. It's a 2 5, so we don't have to worry about losing it. Put target creature guard. Yeah. Let's go and push in with the elemental token. All right, it's going to be 8 coming across. Put our opponent down to 22 if they don't offer up any blocks. Let's see what they go for. Okay. Get the Dryad Arbor on the elemental token, and then we'll see if Sylvan Cave. See. Excuse me, Sylvan Safekeeper will be the block because Sylvan Safekeeper is really good with Get Rog with that sacrifice and land. You can get a lot of card draw going off of that. Okay, put our opponent down to 22 and then anything else. No, we're going to go and pass the turn. So, right now we have Gurk Wild Speaker ticks up to 6. We can go for the minus 4 ability to give all of our creatures trample. That's going to be a pretty good little chunk of damage coming across. And then we also have the bird token to uh, trump block on Get Rog if we want to protect the. Uh, 
protect Gurik. So let's say that we do end up jump blocking with the bird token. This can be one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be five times three. That's gonna be 15 points of damage, and then and you add in the uh, the trample off that. Pretty good. So see if we can't get a good Thanksgiving dinner win like that. But yeah, so I always get mashed potatoes, and then my grandma she also makes um she makes green beans with bacon in it, which is really good. And I'm normally, a, a, I try and eat pretty healthy. I, I try to throughout the year. So that way when I do eat bad, it's not too bad on the system. So Thanksgiving is usually my, uh, hey, let's have some fun. <laughs> Leave it all on the field, man. Got to eat it all. Usually around, we usually eat around 2 or 3 o'clock. So about 4 o'clock is when I kind of slowly descend into that food coma. All right, so we have the Gift Rock Monster swinging across our six. Let's go and offer up the uh, the bird token to the Get Rock Monster. There you go. You're hungry, you get rock. Eat a bird token. It's going to leave us at 51. And then I think if we do go for, no, if we go for the Populate, no, I don't think we want to go for that. Actually, we want to have as many bodies on the battlefield as possible. Now, we could be walking into a board wipe. We'll see what our opponent has. Yep, Damnation. Okay. Anything we want to go for? Yeah, you're going to get it. Okay. It's going to take care of the elemental token. Now, we do have Care of Metro to get down. We do have Devotion with uh, Gurk Wildspeaker. We're a little light on land, so if we can somehow kind of get a few more lands going, then we'll be in a good spot. Or if we want to start making some of these beast tokens, we can definitely go for that too. All right. Opponent does have the deed on top of their library, so we do have to watch out for that. They're going to go activation for four. We'll definitely take care of Gurk. And they do have enough mana to do that next turn too. Okay. So we'll see what we act the best use of Gurk Wildspeaker we can go for. Draw to our Mono Worm. Or we can just get the Worms to Trample down. I think I like that. I guess what we could do is we could hold off on the Worm. It's going to be 6 on Trostani. Maybe they get the D down and go for Gurk Wildspeaker. Then we can go for the Worm to follow that up with. <laughs> True on that. Yes, indeed. A carving knife, since we're doing Thanksgiving. Let's go ahead and go for, um, I'm in our draw step. That's not very good. Uh, let's go for untap up to two target lands and get down Tristani. Let's make sure Tristani's, yeah, it's six total mana. I think I like that. So we're looking at uh, double green, double white, tap the grove down. Let's go for untap up to two target lands. Let's go for Canopy Vista and then the Savannah. Yeah, it's turn seven. We're looking at about four lands. Hopefully we can kind of do something about that. Uh, let's go white and let's go green again. Let's go for Trostani with the intention of going for a Modern Worm the next turn if they go for the Pernicious Deed on a Gurk Wildspeaker. Okay, anything else? We're going to go on pass the turn because that's going to be a good two for them. That way they at least pop it on that. And Because if they do get that down, they can just simply just sacrifice it and destroy all of our tokens that way. And then if we have, well, actually, yeah, that'll survive the uh, Languish on top of the library, so we'll be in a good spot. Get the Gitrog Monster pop back up. And that'll be them activating using it all of their turn next turn. And we can also, um, if we want to make a, ooh, or you draw the hero's downfall. Okay, very nice. All right, it's going to take care of Gurk Wildspeaker. If we want to, we can simply just go for a harmonize next turn. I think we might end up doing that. Because we want to get some uh, get some lands going. That way we can go for Care Metro and get the Arm uh, Armada Worm down. And then maybe get in the spot where we go for the Devote Invocation. That'll work. Okay. Let's go and swing across, and luckily all of our creatures are pretty much going to survive the uh, minus four, minus four off that uh, that language because we're looking at about five, five, and a six, six. So it's going to be pretty good on that. Okay, now swing in from Courser. Draw, ooh, draw into our own Courser. <sighs> Do we want to go for Harmonize or Courser of Crucifix? Now, if we go for Courser, we might be able to make the land drop for the turn. Let's go for Harmonize. I really like that. I want to draw some cards. Kind of bust this open a little bit. Maybe we'll draw into, like, Cultivate or something like that to really start ramping. Okay, draw into City of Brass. Let's go and get that down. Uh, they can play a land if they want to. We'll see if they have one in the hand or not. Okay, let's go and go for Elvish Mystic off the City of Brass. That's going to be one. Get that down. Deal one damage to us. And then we did hit Parallel Lives. So if we do end up going for a Modern Worm, maybe we can kind of set it up to where we get down Parallel Lives first and then go for the Worm. Maybe get into a weird little you know, Populate style thing. Okay, do we want to push in for two? We'll be able to chump. Yeah, we'll just go and hold off. This is going to chump block. It's not really going to do anything. Okay, then kick it back over to our opponent. They do have Dark Petition on top. You know what? In fact, what they're playing with the Library Revealed, let's see if we can't start writing some of these cards down so we don't forget about them. I will definitely do that when I start talking about... Ooh, Primetime's coming down. All right. 
Languish in the hand. Okay, opponent's going to go for prime time. We'll see if they're going to surge up on this one, get two lands onto the battlefield. Uh, the good thing is it does not have haste, so they're not going to be able to push in and get a couple more lands either. But yeah, what, what else do we have? Oh, and then my mom, she makes some really, really good, like, uh, some really good bread. And can't go wrong with carbs. <laughs> I mean, it just at the end of the day, you eat so many carbs from rolls and mashed potatoes and different things like that. But uh, she makes some really good bread. I think there's like, um, and it makes me sound like, <laughs> like I just eat terrible all the time, but it has like two sticks of butter in that bread. So you know it's really good. And uh, I don't know. A lot of fun. All right, Pota does play Urborg, Urborg off the top of the library with Stinkweed, uh, Stinkweed Imp, too. So they haven't really seen life from the loam. That's one way they could definitely take advantage of Corsair and really dredging that library out if they're going to go for Gitrog Monster. But uh, we'll see what we can kind of do about this. At least the main thing is we did hit our fifth land drop, so we can at least get down Care Metra and start getting some lands off, off of our uh, creature cast. But once again, if we can find the Deep Fryer, that is... The uh, pay 50 life, we can definitely go for that. Drawn to Sundering Growth, okay. Yeah, let's go for Karametra. We're just not getting a lot of uh, a lot of action going. Let's go green, let's go white, let's go colorless. Let's tap this for black off the Urborg so we don't lose a life. Oh, excuse me, whatever it comes to tap, it's going to do that anyway. Actually, in fact, let's do it a little bit differently. Let's go black, colorless, and let's tap the Elvish Mystic down. All right, there we go. I'm going to keep our life total intact just a little bit. Get down Karametra, and we'll have devotion for that too. And we're going to be able to gain that life. Okay, we're going to put us up to 58. Anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. Now, they do have prime time swinging in. Good thing we got Karametra down because that is a 6 6, and we have a 6 7 over here because we definitely do have devotion online. All right, anything else, we're going to kick over our opponent. Now, if they do go for languish, that's going to turn off devotion because we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so if they end up going for languish, it's going to take care of their courser, but at the same time, it's going to. Um, turn Devotion off on Karametra, so it kind of puts them in a spot to where they might be able to swing in with Primeval Titan, if they were to go for it. And our opponent does have a uh, Splendid Reclamation on top. Let's go and write that down. Get the deed down. Okay, go for that. And if we did have a creature token onto the battlefield, we could go for a Sundering Growth on that to kind of force the crack. Um, either way, well, actually, I think I don't think we'd get it if it uh, doesn't resolve, then populate, if it's not on the battlefield anymore. Our opponent did get down a Dark Depths for 10, though to keep track of that and make sure we don't uh... oh no, excuse me they have Thespian stage on the battlefield I just, not, <laughs> just not saw that I don't know I'm talking about food too much alright opponent does go for the deeds going to take care of the whole crew on that when did they get that down <laughs> we're talking about food and pay attention to the battlefield <laughs> okay alright sorry about that yeah they have Thespian stage on the battlefield and Dark Depths so if they simply just want to make a copy of Dark Depths they can definitely go for that and oh you know what they probably searched that up on prime time that's probably what happened I missed that one Alright, swing it in for two, see what they're going to go for. Now, a 2020 is not ideal. It's not the best thing that we really want to kind of go for, but um, we have some ways around it. Uh, if we can kind of get some creatures on the battlefield, maybe go for a modern worm, a uh, courser, and kind of tap for a bunch of tokens, then it's something that we can um, tap a bunch of creatures for the invocation, then we can definitely go for that. The only thing is we are sitting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, so we're sitting at 5. We're going to be online for courser off Karametra next turn, so we can at least get the land drop down, slowly start working towards that. Okay, Pano gets down the Golgari Rot Farm. Coming in with the uh, Primeval Titan. And the good thing about Karametra is that, you know, we're at 58, so it's not like we've been paying a lot of life, and a uh, hit from a 2020 is going to absolutely kill us. It's not really going <laughs> to... I mean, it's something we have to deal with, but it's not the end of the world. So, okay. Opponent's going to pass it back over, and let's get the commanders to switch back up. Let's go and make this down just a little bit smaller. There we go. Kind of see their land drops. Okay, see what we draw into. Draw into a Mirari's Wake. So it's going to be us completely tapping out for it. Yeah, let's go and go for Corsair. I, I like that. We're looking at green, green, and then tap the Grove of the Guardian. Let's get down Corsair of Crufix. Let's get that Karametra tr uh, trigger going. Let's go and grab the uh, Scattered Groves. Comes into play, tap. Yes, yeah, so let's go and grab the uh, Temple Garden. That way we're not paying life. Not going to pay two. Nope, we're good. Get on the Corsair of Crufix. Seems on top of our library. Might be able to play and land off top two. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Okay. And then Sundering Titans left in the hand. Anything else we want to go for? No, let's go and pass the turn. So we have Crater Hoof on top of our library. The only thing is we don't have a lot of creatures. So if we end up going for our modern, we we'll go for the worm next turn. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, it's going to be another land drop that's going to put us at 7. And if we get another creature down, or at least another land drop that's going to put us online for Crater Hoof, then we might 
have enough damage to go for that. Um, the main thing is, like I said, we have to watch out for that Dark Depths thing. They can go for the two mana, paying it with the Urborg on the battlefield to get Merit Lage token on the battlefield. So let's say they do go for that. That's going to be 26 coming across. Uh, we're sitting at uh, 52. So that's going to be about... Put us at another 26. Yeah, 26 times 2. Yeah, it's going to be exactly 52. So it's going to be half of our life total, at least right now. And that will be 7 total mana for the Devout Invocation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So hopefully, maybe... So we draw into Crater Hoof. Uh, we draw another land on top of the library. We can go for the Devout Invocation. And then tap down one creature and get like a Worm Token. We'll still have another hit to survive. That We do have to watch out for that Trample damage. So it's almost like they're going to be able to hit us for 26 both times. Okay. We'll see what we can kind of do about it. But hey, let's get Rog. I've played a lot of Get Rog. I've gotten down Merit Lage Token. I always enjoy that. It's always a lot of fun. So we'll see what we can kind of do to get out from underneath this. But anything else Thanksgiving? Oh, and also on Thanksgiving, uh, one of my favorite things is that um, we have my dad's Thanksgiving on Thursday, and then we have my wife's side Thanksgiving that morning around 11. So I get two Thanksgivings on actual Thanksgiving Day, which is uh, <laughs> it's a lot of food. And then we do my mom's family on Saturday which is another Thanksgiving, too, and they have a really big family, too, so it's always um, a lot of fun to see friends and family. So if you're not from the United States and you've always wondered what Thanksgiving is, hopefully I uh, kind of steered you in the right direction, or at least kind of give you a little picture of what it's like on the uh, for a family side of that. All right, put a swing in for 26. Could it be Merit Lage Token coming across and prime time, uh, getting two lands onto the battlefield? Let's see if we can go for that. Now, opponent was Sylvan Safekeeper. Target creature control gains Shroud. We have a little bit of removal in here. We have Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshare. So if we do end up drawing into that and we go for the Merit Lage token, they can simply just sacrifice and land to give that creature a shroud. So we need to find some sort of way to kind of deal with Merit Lage token in the air. Now, I did have, um, I toyed with putting in Sam Word, Sam worm uh, convergence in here it definitely would have been good in this particular matchup but um hey it's not in here so we can't go for that all right opponent's going to push in that's fine go for it it's 26 coming across Ooh, and they did hit a maze of ith and a wasteland out there okay see so we draw into they kick it back uh but yeah i'm trying to think of any other desserts that um out of the ordinary that we bring oh there's something like um man it is really good it's like a uh it's like a fruit salad with whipped cream in there, but it's like green. Man, I cannot remember what it's called. But there's like walnuts in there and different uh, different little fruits. That's, oh, that's really good. It has like this green color too, which um, I don't know why it makes it look really appealing, but it is and it tastes really good. Okay, Pono's going to go for the Stinkweed Imp. Get that down. And then let's see what we draw into. It kind of makes me bummed that I didn't record that match earlier where we get an Aetherflux win. Okay, then we do hit Fortified Village on top of the library. I uh, just going to get that down. Off the top, man, uh, not going to reveal, we actually don't have one, nope, can't reveal it. So we're looking at, we're going to gain one life, puts us at 27. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we can go for the worm and then chump block, double block on prime time if we want to. So if we go for Mirari's Wake, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's going to cut us off on mana. Let's swing in, we're pretty much dead next turn. Um, let's go ahead and get down the Armada Worm. Yeah, I think we'll go for that. We'll go for the Armada Worm. It's going to be 1, 2, 3. We're looking at uh, double white, double green. Actually, do that a little bit differently. Let's go for double green, uh, double white. There we go. Keep hitting that Urborg Swamp. Double white. Then tap out for 2. It's going to be 1 in the City of Brass. Either way, we're going to lose a little bit of damage on that one. Okay. We're going to cast a Creature Spell. Get another land on the battlefield. I'm going to grab that. Uh, I think we have another dual source we can grab off of that. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Let's go and grab the uh, Scattered Groves. That way we don't draw into that. And then what do you have on top? Ooh, we have the Angel. That might buy us a little bit of time. We'll see. Okay. Get the Armada Worm down. We're going to try our best, Trostani. Get that Turkey Fryer going. A little far away from it, but if we can get it somehow, that'd be a lot of fun. And we do turn on Devotion for Karametra and get a 5-5 token on the battlefield at the same time. Okay. Kind of getting somewhere. And then we'll kind of break down what we can go for next turn if we want to. All right, anything else, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. Do not want to swing with Care Metro. We can at least kind of hold the uh, prime time at bay 
and we just have to worry about the Merit Lage token. But with the uh, the Angel on top, if we can keep making our land drops, getting those little 1-1 one -one bird tokens uh, with flying, then we might be able to hold. <laughs> it always makes me laugh when you've got a Merit Lage token that's 20-20 indestructible, and you just kind of throw a uh, throw a little bird token in this way. But uh, but as far as next turn, so we do have Mirari's Wake in the hand. This can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that'll still give us um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to go for that. And we are building up a pretty good little creature count with the uh, the invocation, so if we can go for some good angels, that'll kind of maybe help push the uh, the game in our tide. So hopefully we'll go for that. And if we do get into spots where we can get down parallel lives before we go for the invocation, that'll be a pretty nice chunk of uh, angel damage we can get going. And our opponent's looking at about two flyers in the air with Merit Lage tokens, so hopefully we can kind of keep them at bay. Alright, so we got prime time swinging in. Do we have anything lands we have to worry about? Untap target attacking creature. Okay, so what we can do is we declare the blocker Karametra on Primeval Titan, so that's going to force him to go for the Maze of Ith, um, that way it's not going to get destroyed by uh, Karametra. Then anything else we need to go for, that's going to be 20 coming across, 22, which will put us down to 24. Excuse me, it'll put us down to 5, if they're swinging in for 22. We can still go and chump block the Worm Token on the Sylvan Safekeeper, and it's going to be 21 in the air. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. And go Care Metro. And then once we declare Care Metro a blocker, now if they somehow get rid of Devotion, that will kind of pop Care Metro back with Primetime having, Devo uh, prime time having Trample. That'll definitely kind of complicate it. But I think I, I feel okay going Care Metro on this one. You know, if they have a removal source, so be it. At this point in the game, we're going to try and play to our outs, whatever that is. So definitely like that kind of block on that one. Okay, our opponent does get down Dakmore Salvage and then Drown Yard Temple. Let's go and go for that block. If they've got it, they've got it. We're looking at Care Metra. Let's go for the Armada Worm on the Sylvan Safekeeper. No, excuse me, they still have Languish, so let's not go for the Armada Worm. Let's go for Corsair of Crufix. I think I'd like that. Let's go and put it at six total. Yeah, we'll go and go for that. Yeah, they still have Languish in the hand, so I mean, at this point right now, we got Merit Lage kind of breathing down our neck. We've got him trying to make some blocks like this if we can go for it. Don't really have a lot in the hand. Okay, they're going to go for Maze of Ith on the prime time. That's fine. Kind of figure we were going for that. And if they want to go for Languish on the back end to take care of Sylvan Safekeeper, they can definitely go for that. All right, get rid of the Safekeeper, go to six. And then, hopefully, they kind of pass back over and don't have a lot to show for it. And if they do go for Languish, there are Modern Wars of 5-5, five five, so we're going to be okay on that. Okay, opponent's going to go for Grim Tutor, and they will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So they've got a lot of options to go for with the Grim Tutor. We'll see what they're going to show for it. Either way, we're still going to try and jam Mirari's Wake. Well, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have just enough for Crater Hoof, so we can simply just cast that, get down Crater Hoof, and, you know, unless we're looking at a board wipe or something like that, we'll have to watch out for that. Opponent's going to go for Regrow. Return target card. Okay, that's what we're going to go for. Go for Damnation. That's fine. It's going to take care of the Merit Lage token and take care of Prime Time. And the Care Metro is going to be indestructible, so we'll be okay off of that. And the only thing is, if we are going to go for Crater Hoof, we do have to watch out for Maze of Ith if we're going to go for Lethal. Because um, it may kind of complicate how many creatures we have if, the, uh, if we're trying to get down Crater Hoof and make sure we have enough Lethal damage uh, if they're going to go for Maze of Ith. So, see if they're going to go for Damnation. That's fine. Go for it. Care Metro is still going to stick around. It's going to clear the board out. Take care of the uh, thing is we have not seen uh, Life from the Loan for them to go for the Dark Depths Thes Thespian stage again. So we'll see if they have it. Death Threat Shaman. Okay. Okay, and they're going to kick it back over to us. See what we draw into. Draw into the Angel. All right. So this point right now... If we go for Mirari's Wake, we'll have six total mana to get down. Still have Merit Lage, excuse me, Merit Lage tokens indestructible, so we have to get the Angel down. And that's whenever a land enters the battlefield, so we actually don't have a land to make for the turn. Yeah, because that's going to be a landfall trigger ability. I think they're going to have it. Because we're going to have to tap any number of target creatures to go for the invocation uh, that we control and create an angel for those. If we go for parallel lives, we simply just don't have a land drop to make for the turn. It's going to be enough. I think they're going to get it. I and mean, we could go for Trostani, but we're not going to be able to gain enough life, kind of no matter how we get it down. So, And then the yeah, the token off the Grove of the Guardian is going to be something with Vigilant. So hey, good game to our opponents. Good game. Enjoyed it. 
But yes, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I'm sorry I didn't get you a win. Definitely tried to go for it. But uh, when you got Merritt Lage breathing down your neck, he definitely uh, makes a mess of the uh, Thanksgiving table when he slides across eating everything and knock everything off the table. But yes, hey, hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.